This is part two of a video series where I show how to make uh, circuit boards. Uh, so here we have the boards that we finished up in part one. We um, exposed them, etched them, and then tin plated them. And these are boards for a basic uh, PC microphone amplifier. And in, this, in this video I'm going to show how to apply a green solder mask and then I'm going to actually assemble the boards, you know, solder the components on them, and then I will uh, demonstrate them. Hopefully they will work and work well. Um, they're based off of a um, prototype that I made that worked out pretty well. So what are you gonna need? Um, you're gonna need, obviously, the, uh, it's called a dry film solder mask. It's in here, it's, uh, you'll see it later on. It's a green film. Um, the black is just to keep light off of it. Um, you're gonna need a laminator. Uh, which we've got here. Uh, just a regular laminator is fine. Um, keep in mind that they're usually made for you know paper and a circuit board is much thicker. So it's fine for a narrow circuit board. If you want to make really wide boards, you may have to look carefully for a uh, purpose-built laminator for that. Um, but anyway, yes, I'm using a, just a low-cost uh, consumer laminator. Um, you're probably going to want to use uh, some tweezers unless you want to stick your hand in the uh, developer. Um, you'll need some sandpaper to clean up the board when we're done. Uh, tin snips to trim the board to shape when we're done. A uh, cheap acid brush for mixing up the uh, developer and brushing the boards. Um, scissors and just regular tape for um, cutting the film and applying it uh, to the boards. You'll probably want a scale so you can accurately measure the, uh, the developer. A container that will fit the boards, uh, a way to measure uh, water, and then the actual uh, developer chemical. It is sodium carbonate, if that'll focus. There you go. Um, you can buy this pretty much anywhere. Anyway, so um, you'll need all that, and obviously you will need the mask, which is kind of hard to see, but there you go. The uh, black is going to be what will eventually be the exposed tin, and then everything else will be covered in green solder mask. And then you'll need the um, PCB exposing kit that I mentioned in the first video, and I'll show you in a little bit. And just like in the first video, I have I have links to all these items in the video description in case you're curious about where to buy them or pricing and all that. The first step is to laminate the boards. Uh, the laminator is going to take some time to heat up, so I'll go ahead and plug it in and uh, get it going. So my laminator has two settings, 3mm and 5mm. Uh, that would be paper thickness, but basically 5 mil is the hotter temperature, and that is what we want. So, yeah, turn it on, set it to 5 mil, and then with this particular laminator, the ready light will turn blue when it is up to temperature. While that is uh, heating up, we can go ahead and cut the uh, solder mask. So it's a green film. In fact, there's a little bit of cutoff that's actually the perfect size for one of the boards, and I need to make another one. So um, I'll just cut off another piece. Okay, um, so make sure you store this out of, uh, you know, in the dark, not out of light. Um, and then I have these roughly cut to size pieces. And I'll now uh, kind of cut them a little more carefully. Uh, what we want is you want, uh, you obviously want there to be a little bit of overlap. So, um, you know, maybe a you know, quarter of an inch, uh, five millimeters uh, along the perimeter. Um, you don't want it to be hanging off the edge of the board. Otherwise, when you run it through the laminator, that edge will actually stick to your laminator and it will make a mess, which you can kind of see a little bit of residue right there. If you do happen to do that, um, it's an easy way to fix it. Just run a sheet of regular white paper or any paper through it, and then the uh, the green uh, like goo or whatever will stick to the paper, and that'll clean off the rollers. Just do that a few times.
After you have your uh, pieces cut to shape, uh, well here, uh, in case it wasn't clear earlier, that's basically what you want is uh, you know a little little overlap all the way around. Okay, so you take um, two small pieces of tape, just like two squares. You don't need much. You find you pick a corner, any corner of the mask. Apply tape to one side and to the other. So my uh, camera just cut out, but yeah, you apply tape to one corner and then to the opposite or the back side of the same corner and then you pull it apart. Now if you pull slowly, the tape is just going to peel off. You need to kind of um, quickly like jerk it apart and that will cause uh, the film to pull off. So like that. So this is trash. And then try not to touch the, uh, the film. And you just uh, kind of press it down onto one edge of your design. So that's it. You can see I just pressed it down on that edge. The rest is kind of floating. That's what you want. You can then peel off the tape carefully. Make sure you didn't lift anything up. And that is ready to go into the laminator. So these are both ready now. Um, I forgot to mention is, uh, what, or what I forgot to mention is if you've had these boards sitting around, make sure you clean them off. You know, obviously if you trap any dust under there, it will be there forever. Okay, so uh, the laminator is now uh, warm. The blue light came on and I can just pass them through. Um, I found that generally about five passes through uh, works out pretty well. Um, what you're looking for is, not sure if it'll focus. Um, all right, uh, what you're looking for is you can kind of see here that in between the uh, traces, it's yellow. That is the color of the fiberglass. And when the solder mask is pushed into all those grooves, it will be green, like uh, the edge that I pushed down. So that's what you're looking for. You want them to be, you want everything to be green, basically, all of your uh, fiberglass. And uh, I'm not sure if a typical consumer level laminator will get hot enough, but if it gets too hot, you'll end up kind of melting the, uh, the solder mask and it'll kind of ooze out from the, the top protective film. So uh, yeah, that's kind of what you're aiming for. Don't get it too hot, but get everything squished in there. So with the edge that you pressed down, you feed that into the laminator and then it will press down the rest of it for you. All right, so it's been through five times. Um, yeah, that's not gonna focus, so you'll see later. Um, but um, yeah, so it's pressed in pretty well. And in the back, there are a few little pockets where it didn't get pressed in. It's never gonna be perfect um, because we know we're not laminating under vacuum, but it's pretty good. So uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, that's all you need the laminator for, so you can turn it off. And uh, now we need to uh, expose the boards. Here's a close-up shot of the two boards. Um, you can see they're not quite perfect. Uh, for example, there's uh, some little air bubbles right there in the shadow of the pen, um, that kind of thing. But it's um, very good for you know basically at-home solder mask. And like I was talking about before. Um, that's kind of what you're looking for. All the green pushed in uh, between where, you know, where all the traces are. And you can see that there, it isn't pushed in all the way like right there. It's, uh, you can see some of the yellow, but it's, um, yeah, good enough. 
For the solder mask developer, we need to mix up a half a gram of sodium carbonate to about four ounces of water. You can kind of see there's not much in there, it doesn't take much. Then just uh, mix it into the, or mix the sodium carbonate into the water and then transfer it into a uh, smaller container. Now we expose the board. So you take the, uh, the board Take your solder mask, uh, you know, mask. You carefully align it on the board. You then put the acrylic sheet on top to kind of weight it down and make sure the film doesn't move around. And then you turn on the lamp and you expose it. Uh, with my particular lamp, it takes quite a long time, about um, 60 minutes, you know, an hour. So it'll be a while. So yeah, you carefully align it and make sure that the uh, all the pads are covered correctly. You, you uh, The whole point of the solder mask is to keep short circuits from happening when you have a solder blob between uh, traces or a trace and a, a ground plane or something like that. So take your time, get it right, and then you can expose it for an hour. Okay, the um, 60 minute exposure is done, and now we can uh, develop the solder mask. So there's still a layer of uh, protective film on here, the, uh, the glossy, uh, there's a glossy clear film on here, and we can peel that up. Just take a razor blade or box cutter or knife, whatever, and work it under one of the edges and the film will kind of pop up and then you can just uh, peel it off. And place it in the developer. All right, so that's pretty much developed. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take it out and wash it off. There's the board. Um, now the data sheet says for the final cure, there are two more things that we have to do. Uh, we need to expose it again. I'm going to expose it for another half hour. Um, you don't need the mask on, you're just exposing what you have left. And then an important part is, the, uh, is a, uh, a final bake. And you need to uh, bake it for about 30 minutes at about 150 degrees Celsius, which is about 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So we'll do both of those. All right, so the last step is to bake it at uh, 300 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes. Now I will cut the boards to shape. Uh, I'll just use uh, the tin snips and uh, get pretty close to the perimeter and then I will clean up the edges with uh, sanding block 
and then um, as you will see later on in the video um, the headphone jacks that I'm using actually require um, probably not going to focus they require a little cutout in the board which I will make with some uh, needle files Now I'll go ahead and populate the boards. Um, I've got two boards. Unfortunately on one of them when I was um, filing a notch in for the headphone jack, I um, cut right through one of the traces so I'll have to run a wire. Uh, the other one turned out pretty good though. So I forgot to record it, but I, uh, I just cleaned off the circuit board, so I took some uh, isopropyl alcohol and uh, one of those acid brushes, and I just uh, cleaned it off in the sink. And uh, there we have it. Let's uh, make sure it works before I plug it into my computer. Um, as you saw earlier, um, I plugged in a USB power bank and the green LED lit up, which is good because that means there is no short circuit. Um, otherwise, the, uh, the little green poly fuse would have tripped. So I'm going to plug it into my oscilloscope and uh, we'll make sure it works. So here's my, uh, my uh, cheap um, stereo microphone and it plugs into the uh, front port like that. For power, just give it a mini, mini USB. 
And let's take a look on the scope. So I'm gonna power it from the scope. So I don't have to bother hooking up a ground line. Uh, well, at least for low frequency stuff like audio. You can see the green LED is lit. Take my probe. Microphone check. Microphone check. Microphone check. Microphone check. So that looks to be the left channel. And microphone check. Microphone check. And that looks to be the. Uh, eh, I'm not going to focus. The uh, the right channel. Anyway, so it looks to be working right. Let's plug it into the computer and I'll show you guys how it actually um, sounds. So right now you're hearing the output of my microphone amplifier. This is what it sounds like when I use that circuit board that I just made. And uh, at least to me it sounds much better than uh, what I was doing before. So before I would just plug the microphone directly into the computer, which is what you would normally do. And uh, I'll go ahead and show you what that sounds like. This is what it sounds like when I have the microphone plugged in directly into my uh, sound card without the amplifier. And as uh, it might be obvious, or maybe if you use headphones to listen, uh, it just does not sound very good. The, uh, the background noise is pretty bad. And when I, um, when I edit this video, I have to use um, you know uh, gain in software to bring the volume up to a reasonable level which is part of why that noise um, is amplified as well. Um, and then if you're curious to hear what it sounds like if I don't apply any gain in uh, post-production, this is what that sounds like. So it's very quiet, you can hardly hear me, and um, yeah, it, it's just unusable. And now I'm back to using the PC microphone amplifier that I made. Um, so I just thought I'd finish up this uh, segment with uh, the schematic so you can kind of get a feel for how it's working. Uh, we have a, a mini USB connector coming in. I'm only using the five volt and ground lines. Uh, I'm using a 200 milliamp uh, polyfuse. That's way too much current, but it's what I had laying around. Um, probably a 50 milliamp uh, fuse would have been better. Uh, and then I have a LM1117 3.3 volt regulator, just a basic cheap low dropout regulator. Uh, little LED indicator so you can tell when it's powered on and then um, for the op amp um, I need half of the voltage rail so um, half of 3.3 .3 is 1.65 uh, which I have right here and then on the left we have uh, the microphone input um, and so these are the part numbers in case you want to buy the same connectors that I'm using um, but yeah it's a basic uh, low-cost connector uh, and so the tip is the left audio channel and then the ring is the right audio channel with a uh, PC microphone it's um, It has an internal amplifier and basically you need to pull it up um, So I'm using a 4.7 K ohm resistor to 3.3 volts and then AC couple so a 1 microfarad um, series capacitor and then I have uh, the op amp so basically it's a uh, you know, it's comparing the two voltages. Um, it's comparing 1.65 volts to uh, what it's getting from the microphone. And uh, what it's effectively doing with uh, the 180K and 3.3K resistor is I have a gain of about 55, um, which I kind of experimented with earlier on some breadboard stuff. And that seems to work out pretty well. Um, so yeah, these are basically a amplifier that uh, applies 55 times gain and then the output is AC coupled with um, a 1 microfarad capacitor um, and it's all duplicated for the left and right channel exactly the same and then it goes out to uh, the connector in the back um, so that's really all there is to it and uh, if you have any questions or comments um, feel free to leave them down below and then the circuit board which you saw earlier is uh, this so yeah there's not much to it um, and if we look at the 3D view, uh, it looks like that. I didn't bother drawing a, a 3D view or a 3D uh, component for the connectors. Um, 
But yeah, that's that's about all there is to it. That sounded pretty good. I think I'll be using this in my future videos for the voiceovers. Uh, I think what I want to do is apply some heat shrink so that I don't, uh, you know, short things out if it's floating around on my desk. Um, it's too big. Hmm. I don't really have a perfect size, but I think I can stretch this one and make it fit over. Alright, so there we have it, the uh, end result. I think it turned out pretty good. Alright, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And if you know anybody that uh, might benefit from this video, please share a link with them.